Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Let's Talk. Uh, it's a uh, listener call-in forum program. We want everyone to call in. And we right. is... We is... <laughs> we is... <laughs> Stephen Horowitz. Hello. Shelley Rugg. Hello there, Paul. And I'm Paul Raphael. And uh, we like to get to the root causes of uh, issues that affect us all. Dig and, down uh, deep. We believe that your voice matters because, you know, our voices, you know, we don't know anything. And we welcome <laughs> all your thoughts, views, opinions, experiences without judgment. Please join today's conversation. You're going to hear a lot of phone numbers today, but. Here's uh, here's one. Here are two to remember for now. Please join today's conversation by calling four one five six six three eight four nine two or eight three one seven. But there's another phone call phone number to remember, and that is the pledge line. That's right, because We're pledge drive is starting today. Happy Halloween, today. everyone! Happy Halloween and happy pledge drive. And uh, I'd just like to say, right off the bat, that we have a $100 challenge, challenge from some wonderful people Easy up in peasy. Marshall. And uh, so this gives us the incentive to ask for money because uh, you'll, we'll get twice the money. If, you, if we get $100, that will be worth $200, thanks to the generosity of George and Sherry Clyde. So, uh, and the number to call for the pledge drive to pledge to this station to keep us on the air and give you all the information we can about public <laughs> affairs and about emergencies. What's that number? What's that the number? The number is 415-663-9050. 415-663-9050. And uh, call that number to talk to the lovely Elisa Doran, who's out there awaiting calls, yes, looking she's terribly bored. We and, need that phone uh, to ring, people. We need that phone to ring. So please be generous. It's the first day of the pledge drive. We uh, we only do two a year, I think. And, uh, and we're just trying to raise $500 during our show. During this show. If you love this show, and I know you do. We know you're listening. <laughs> then I think that $100 is going to be easy. Call 415-663-9050. Yeah, if you can contribute that $100, and then we've got our, our grant met, and we'd only have 300 more to go. And, of course, a great way to meet that $100 would be to join the Calendar Club, which is a wonderful way to give. Uh, once yeah, a month, I'm it, a member. It comes out of your uh, credit card, and you don't even feel the pain. <laughs> Unless you can't pay your credit card. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> but <laughs> Anyway. Yeah. And if you're, I think if you're over $15 a month for your calendar club, you get entered in drawings for gift baskets, which is pretty cool. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I'm sure um, Mia can correct me if well, I'm the gift, wrong. The best gift baskets are, uh, are a wonderful thing and uh, carefully assembled. By the staff oh, here. Oh, she's holding one right now in her very hand. My there you go. goodness. Fifteen or more a month. Fifteen or more a month 15. you get entered to win a gift basket, and there's, gosh, all kinds of fun things in there. Tickets to, oh, San Rafael Film, and uh, a fabulous K KWMR tote bag. You get a book. You get all oh, it's two of pairs of socks? Yeah. And what's this? Got to have the socks. It's worth about $100. Each time. Each time. That's every month. Yeah, and and I believe. Oh yeah. The Tin Woods Woman. Oh yes. <laughs> With the, tin the heart. Lady. The She's tin got a heart. Yeah. All right, that's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. But what are we talking about today on on Let's oh, Talk? What other than the pledge drive? <laughs> yes. And the importance of uh, <laughs> of donations to this station. Four one five six six three nine zero five zero to donate. Hundred dollars right now. Do it. We uh, we're part of the mission of the station is to keep everyone updated on uh, local affairs, on uh, emergency situations, and uh, they right. did a fine job during the fires and the uh, power outage. And the, Public safety power shutoffs, which is what we're talking about today. The Marshall, PSPS. we are still without power. We are still under Aww. PSPS. 
Yes. Yes, yes. And that may be because there's a couple of lines down at one of the houses up there. So, um, so anyway, life without like to, power, that's what like, we're going to talk about. Well, so there's this thing afoot yeah. uh, about not calling it power if you're talking about electricity. But I, I don't know. I think uh, this is a power play by PG&E mm. just, to, just to remind us all who's really – in charge. So those but who don't want to call it power, what do they want to call it? Electricity. Uh huh. So it's an elec- it's it's so hard to say. Electricity, electricity shut off. Electricery, I like to Electricery. Call it. Oh. Well you know, electricity is really what separates us from the animals. From the third world, <laughs> really. <laughs> Take is it away really? a, yeah. Well, we've certainly become dependent upon it. I mean, all the whining, good heavens. Mm, did you whine, Paul? I did. Oh, no. I'm still whining. What was your biggest complaint? Um, I, well, you're I, still having it, right? Yeah, it's still yeah. off. Okay. It's, uh, it's fine, what's actually. Made it, what's you the know, but actually, it biggest was, challenge? That, it's a lovely thing, really, is uh, that people started getting together. There was a house down the road who, that has a... Quite large generator, uh, powering the whole house, so everyone would go there for dinner every night, thanks to the generosity of the homeowner himself, a wonderful wow. person. Nice. Um, so it's been community building in a way. I think they did a similar thing in Inverness. They met on the school green. The other sort of day. like camping. It's like camping, except we're in it's very glamping. comfy houses. <laughs> yes, it's, it's glamping. <laughs> well, you but, know, uh, the, yeah. the biggest thing is. Um, now, part of and one of the things we whine about now is uh, AT and T. We used to have a landline, and it would stay on, and that's you know it's nice to know. We happen to have we're in the uh, emergency response network up in Tamales as well, so we have walkie talkies. So everyone's been talking about everything. If the landlines were off as well for a period of time. Well, see, landlines now are not just hooked up to the landline network. They're hooked up to digital stations, oh. which require a little bit of power. Um, electricity. So it's electricity. not quite a landline, no, it's not. is it? It isn't anymore. So you can't rely on phones anymore. So we have a, I have a little backup battery thing that lasts for about – it's supposed to last for about six hours. Mm. But, uh Apparently, the battery packs died during the thing, so I had to run into Petaluma and get new battery packs. But anyway, that's the main thing is that we wanted to keep in touch if, uh, you know, uh, like PG&E calls you, right, <laughs> to tell you your power is going on or off. And if your phone's off, then... They can't do that. And, that's, wow. and that was the internet as well. So we've yeah. had, I, we have a little generator as well, just enough to plug in things <laughs> like the... The pressure pump for the water and and uh, just to keep the keep the phone line up and the internet. So actually, we've been very comfy. I think we're going to yeah. see more of these. Uh, yes, in the future. Well, that's part of the thing. So, right. part of, is this the new normal? I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it is. And why is that? Why are we? Uh, why is the equipment uh, this dangerous in? Is it just about climate change or is it also about well, mismanagement of monies it, by pg and It's not about pg and It's about maintenance of the forests. Apparently, that's where we're going wrong. Yeah, Didn't you know that, Paul? These, these aren't forest fires. <laughs> <laughs> these are wildland but, fires. But, you know, not. people in other states, apparently, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what oh, they yeah. say. Of course. Oh, California, they don't manage those forests, you right. know. Well, that- they got to sweep up those needles. <laughs> <laughs> sweep up like they do in Finland or somewhere. I have to say, though, there is a, uh, from what I've been hearing, a uh, new con- a new look at uh, what has been the past forest management yeah. approach. They're, they're thinking thinking this through. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, you know. Controlled burns. Certainly this thing of suppressing all fires in national forests. By my house, they uh, cleared the 12 foot on either side of the electrical mm. power lines. Uh, it's it's a big gaping wound in the hillside. It's mm. really hard to hard to look at that, and mm. and where the trees are gone causes more dryness. Mm. So it's more susceptible mm. to to fire but without less, the trees yeah, there. Less susceptible to wind. 
you know, trunks falling, or I mean, trees falling on lines. The trees aren't going to fall on the lines. Shelly, I think they know what they're doing. You do? Really? <laughs> oh. Well, well, see, well so. okay, so here's, here's what I was going to get to is, so we have to cut down all these trees for our safety, hmm. but, you know, one of the, the things that they say that is going to help with climate, mitigate climate change is planting trees. We're Having supposed to trees. plant millions of trees, and right. so meanwhile, we're cutting them down. It's right. just... It's hard for me to reconcile with that. Well, so uh, anyway, here's the uh, here are several numbers to remember. Four one five six six three eight four nine two. If you want to talk to us about your experiences, perhaps, or your opinions about uh, the electricity you know, the shut off, power shutoffs that have been happening, electricity shutoffs. Four one five six six three eight four nine two or eight three one seven. But Starting today, a really important number to remember, and not just to remember, but to actually call, is 415-663-9050, and make a pledge to this station, the station that is here to uh, entertain and to inform the uh, the people around us. Actually, many people in Sonoma County, too, people are starting to listen to us all over the place now. So, Well, yeah, with the app and all. Yep. So cool. uh, please do call 415-663-9050. Make a pledge. It's really easy. And it's great if you do it during this show because then we feel like... We feel special. Yeah, I feel was proud. just about to say that. And it loved. Will, it will boost our uh, self-esteem. That's right. And that's important. <laughs> <laughs> whining. Oh. We're whining again. <laughs> anyway, so, part, I, so cutting yes. down trees to save the power lines. Yeah. It's it again. It's uh, it's not maybe not mismanagement, but lack of forethought in the past. Putting power lines through forests instead of under forests, perhaps. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. Maybe there's a, a better way. People say, "Well, why don't they bury these lines?" So apparently, yeah. it's about four between four and five million dollars per mile to bury. Uh, these wow. I think that's pretty absurd, frankly, from my point of view. Burying the, the burying the if you if you're talking about uh, removing trees, hmm. burying lines would m- remove thousands of trees. Hmm. Oh. Well, you, if you want to get in there with equipment to dig ditches, you can't do it if trees are in the way. Mm-hmm. Right, True. and the root systems and all that. I'm not worried. I I think the trees well, when you weigh the the trees versus the the uh, danger of fire. I think the the I think the wires yeah, win. I I get you, but uh, there have been reports that PG and E didn't do their due diligence on maintaining mm. the yes. equipment. Yeah, and so now we're being impacted. Yes. By that, and we're having to pay the price, really. And uh, let's just point out, we have been paying the price already for the, I think, the San Bruno fire that was a gas started by a faulty gas uh, installation. Hmm. Uh, the rates went up after that. We're paying for the for the fine that they paid. I mean, that's part of the deal they made with the Public Utilities Commission. Um, it, uh, the San Francisco fire after the earthquake, it was caused by what? gas lines oh. rupturing. So there's a long history. Of, and that was the, the beginning of PG&E, of course. So uh, it's not a yeah. new phenomenon that fires are started by uh, electrical and gas I think you referred in your, in your writing to the fact that uh, they're paying dividends at the same time, yeah. uh, not directing enough money to maintenance. I think that's a big Big yeah, issue. there was a, uh, let's see, a judge, I've forgotten where that was, though, but uh, a, a judge has ruled that uh, in during the 2000, I think it was 2010, uh, they diverted a lot of maintenance funds into dividends and, uh, and you know, perks for the, the new CEO coming in, I think, is only getting like two and a half million a year, so, you know. Not so much, but they did divert funds, yeah, away from uh, regular maintenance to uh, to acquire other companies. I mean that 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 the history of PG and E is that they, when deregulation happened, they there were all these 
competing smaller utility companies. They went out and bought them all up. So did South, ah. Southern California Edison, who were also I, they were certainly thinking about doing uh, power, uh, safety shutoffs, but uh, whether they did or not, I'm not sure. But I'm mm. sure. there's lots of fires down there. Yeah, and you know, you're assuming that some somebody else would do a better job. Well, no, I mean. Uh, <laughs> The infrastructure that's there. What do we? What can be done about it? I don't know. There are there are some solutions to the PG&E's bankruptcy that they could be bought out by investors who would probably break the thing up and steal the well, wire. Yeah, somebody and, was know. talking <laughs> about, earlier today. They were talking about localizing. You know, the yeah. uh, the power company, or the well, water company, utilities, localizing the utilities. local utilities. A wonderful idea. Uh, and something that certain people who should be calling in fairly soon uh, have been working have been working on for a long time. Uh, but um, yeah, and in this case, the public, not ju- well, everyone would uh, would bear the brunt of that. We would be liable for the debts and the liabilities incurred by PG and E. But oh, right. Hmm. The state or whoever takes it over or the cities. Oh, they would take over the debt. You know, the, if, you, if, mm. you, if you dismantle PG&E, oh. there's that. You, can, you, know, you have to kind of think about that. So, you know, the, last, the, the largest fires in uh, California's history occurred within the last five years. Yeah. What does that say? It Climate means change. It's all coming at us. This is going to be. This is going to be ongoing. Every well, you time know, there's a bit of wind, they're going to shut it down. I kind of was feel the feeling I had when the power went out, and we didn't know how long it would come back. You know, until it would mm. come back on, and you guys still have it out. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it it sort of felt like this is a this is a practice. Mm. You know, for things we're going to have to deal with as time marches on exactly. and and things are going to just constantly be changing at a, at a greater rate than what we think of as normal. And uh, it's the next generation. I'm not going to have to worry about it. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows whether there's when the power is going to return to Marshall, Please call in and let us know. Well, they did say know. by 2 p.m., but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they said oh, nine, to come today? 9 p.m. yesterday, so mm. it was a countdown mm. at mm. our house. And well, if you want to talk with us about the uh, power outage or electricity shutoff, <laughs> uh, please call 415-663-8492. And if you want to donate, because KWMR is raising money right now, and we, we have a, a challenge grant, $100 from George and Sherry Clyde, we'd love you to call 415-663-9050 and m- match that pledge. Yes, please. In any way you can. Any donation is welcome, of course, any amount. But, uh, yeah, we do have a $100 challenge grant, so uh, that would be nice to at least meet uh, as quickly as possible. You know, if you you donate $50... Um, you can get we have a, a tote bag, a KWR tote bag, and I have one, and they're really nice. Uh, nice yeah. and sturdy, and it has a cool design on it. They are sturdy. Oh. You got a caller? Two calls. Oh, we got to call us. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, how am I going to do? <laughs> I guess one at a time. Uh, whoever called <laughs> 8317, you're on the air. Hello, Charles? <laughs> Charles. Well, oh. I don't know which number oh, I hear. Oh, that's Dave. Dave. Talk. I okay. just told my phone to call KWMR, and it did it. I don't know what number. Okay. I hear. Well, there's both of you on the air right now, whoever you are. David, hi. Hey. Well, hi. Um, uh, I I wonder about the liability for uh, for the the wires that i mean the pg is a utility or electricity is a utility it's something that everybody needs we all de- are dependent on mm. and yet it crosses all sorts of private property now i know there is right of way declared so that it's kind of un- the property owner still owns it but pg is responsible for maintenance but i wonder why aren't the property owners responsible or at least partially responsible for maintaining 
clearance around electric lines? Good question. Uh, of course, the, the I think from what I've heard, the uh, this uh, fire up in uh, what's it called? What fire? the Kendrick <laughs> fire? Kendrick. I'm going to take my answer off the air. Oh, thank you, thank you, David. Thanks for calling. Bye, David. Oh, I hope that was you. Hello, who is the yeah the caller still on the line? They were on line one. David oh, was no, on line two. Line two. Oh dear. Well, yeah. call back, please. I'm so sorry. Uh, try to uh, try to remember what number you called, and uh, <laughs> anyway, David's question. Um, I believe this fire was caused by an actual transmission line, one of the high tension lines. An insulator broke. And it contacted the metal tower. the 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 cable hit the metal tower, so it wasn't a tree coming down. Because uh-huh. those those high tension Here lines are way in the clear. Uh, but yeah, there's a there is a uh, liability. State law follows a principle of inverse condemnation for wildfire liability, which means that utilities are held responsible for damages resulting from any fire caused by their equipment, even if their maintenance on equipment and surrounding vegetation was done to standards. This policy resulted in $30 billion of liability for PG&E from the 2017 and 2018 fires, which, of course, drove them to declare bankruptcy. Hi, caller, you are on the air again. What's your name, please? Hello, this is Fred. Fred! Marshall. Hey. I wouldn't be calling you if I was in Marshall. Yeah, right. Because I wouldn't have a phone. That's right. That's uh, progress, isn't it? Wow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm calling you from the big world out there. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, PG&E is too big. Yeah. Uh, the bankruptcy court should break them up, mm. and municipalities should run their own electricity systems because Sacramento is a perfect example. They've been running their system for maybe 50 years, mm. and all, everybody who buys electricity in Sacramento pays a lot less than we do. Yeah. And and also because because they don't have any stockholders. Mm-hmm. PG and right. there you go. Stock exchange. They have to satisfy profits. Mm-hmm. They put profits ahead of safety. Yep. Because they have to keep their stock up. Now <laughs> it's crashing. Uh, they need to be liquidated and the bankruptcy court needs to maybe go to the state or whatever to help the people who are suing them uh, get whole because mm. pg e doesn't have the assets. Mm. I think these are pretty uh, good thoughts. Uh, I think that's the way to go. I, I okay. concur. I got a, I got a, I got a plan. Ah. Oh, right. I, um, I just signed a contract to get some PV solar cells. Yeah, and I'm going to get a Tesla battery, mm-hmm. a Tesla power wall, yep. like Dana has, and it's much better than the generator idea because they're noisy, they're polluting, yeah, sure, and they're dangerous. Of course, they have gasoline sitting around all the time, and then they run out of gasoline. They do. They are noisy. So, wow. Yeah, we need to get past the gas. That's true. Yeah, each village in West Marin could have a community grid. Mm-hmm. You get. An easement on a ranch, put your solar cells, um, and then the houses that are nearby, uh, tap into that, and you have some power walls, uh, you know, in each house. Excellent. So that you can charge up for for the night usage, and then during the day, you're feeding the power walls with your PV cells. So the that would require uh, quite a lot of money to set something like that up. Where would that come they're, from? They're going down in price. They're... They're decreasing in price, but right now you're looking at like seven thousand dollars for a house. But if we're talking about a yeah. a whole village, who who would be footing that? Well, bill? I think that each house would have to have a battery system. Oh, I see. But um, I, I'm not sure the the details of this. But I mean, why not just start with each house? You know, if you have a sun hitting your roof, you can put your own PV cells on. And then feed the grid during the day mm-hmm. when it's somewhat cheaper. But then at night, they're going to really rip people off at night because that's uh, they're going to um, time of use. They have three tiers right now, and they're going to time of use. Mm-hmm. So when everybody's on watching TV, clicking 
on their electric ranges, turning on electric heat um, during the night, uh, it's going to be very, very expensive. Hmm. So that's why you need a battery. So you feed your battery during the day and the grid, and then at night you don't have to get on the grid unless until your battery runs out. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, that at all you price wise, size it, you know, so there's proper size for your usage. Yeah. Yeah. You know, price yeah. wise, if you amortize the cost of a battery, I haven't really thought this out, but sometimes if you amortize that, the hmm. cost savings will pay for the battery. Over so oh, many over the, years. Yeah, yeah, so many years. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. So I haven't done the math, but that's something yeah. to consider as well. Something to think about. Well, thank yeah. you, Fred. Thank you so much. Good ideas. Good luck with your, good luck with your power. <laughs> power to the people, I may, man. <laughs> I may be in Berkeley longer than I want. <laughs> yeah, I we'll let you know when it comes back on. <laughs> I'm going to come back to Marshall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what to do? The refugee. I can Marshall. Yeah. How can you work without the internet? Exactly, it's impossible. We have we've okay. had seven refugees Thanks, at our Fred. place in the last uh, well, yeah, five days. You know, that's the thing too. Is you know, we have our personal hardships at our homes, but there's you know, people missing work, a yeah. business is not being able to to function. Yep. Uh, it, there's a lot of impact. A lot of impact. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, let's just say we have this uh, information to read. The Kincaid fire is now 60% contained and air quality in Mar- West Marin has improved. Dry conditions persi- persist and the high pressure zone is still in effect, causing very low humidity. The risk for fire is very high. Please use extreme caution and avoid activities that could spark a fire. 96% of Marin County customers. Customers have had their electricity restored. And uh, this is KWMR 90.5 in Point Reyes Station, 89.9 in Bolinas, and 92.3 in San Geronimo Valley. And KWMR is supported by listener members and by Dance, Pu- Dance Palace a Community and Cultural Center, located at 5th and B Streets in Point Reyes Station. Member supported, the Dance Palace offers classes, events, and facility rentals for all the communities of West Marin. Membership information, volunteer opportunities, Opportunities and schedules available at 415-663-1075 or online at dancepalace.org. And we're also supported by Hog Island Oyster Company, a California benefit corporation farming oysters on Tomales Bay since 1983 and cultivating a bay-to-bar experience in Marshall, San Francisco, and Napa. Welcoming Tony's Seafood Restaurant in Marshall as their newest bay-to-bar restaurant. Information online at hogislandoysters.com and tonysseafoodrestaurant.com. And local programming is provided by our community members and by Point Reyes Farmstead Cheese Company, offering handcrafted artisan cheese, including fresh mozzarella, bay blue, toma, and Point Reyes original blue. The farm's culinary and educational center, The Fork, offers farm-to-table culinary experiences and is available for events. More information at 1-800-591-6878 or online at pointraisecheese.com. And let's not forget, this is a pledge drive. We're first day of the pledge drive. Please call 415-663-9050 to make a pledge. I don't think we've had any yet, and we're not feeling the love. We need to feel some love. (laughs) And, caller, you are on the air. What's your name, please? Eden. Eden, hello. Hi, Eden. Hey, you all. Thank you so much for the conversation. I was late joining in, though I meant to be there on time. Ah. I couldn't agree more with the last uh, the last person who spoke about having small local grids. We really need to be in control of our electricity and do it for sustainability and care of the earth, not for profit. Uh, apparently, this uh, PG&E went from B. When was what happened with uh, Pat Wilson? Uh, Republican Pat Wilson, who was governor of California. I, I believe that's when um, P. 
PG&E became a privately owned company with shareholders, and of course they they do this for money, not for the care of the earth, not to serve the people. So we have to get we have to take that out of their hands completely, as far as I'm. Concerned. Yeah. Yeah, it was the deregulation in Pete Wilson's. Uh, yes, that was. Where the are the true? Rep- are there any Republicans who care for the people and who care for the earth? <laughs> Please stand up and let your voices be heard. Because give us a God. call. That's right. <laughs> There was just one point I wanted to make. As, as you, you all know me, know that you know English is my second language. So I hear things a little bit differently from folks who were born in this country and spoke English immediately. But I hear power. Uh, PG&E cut the power. Da da da. PG&E has the power indeed to cut our electricity. But as far as I'm concerned, we the people have the power. PG&E delivers electricity, not power. And I think there's a big a big difference energetically in how we look at, you know, who we are, what's inside of us, what we can do with it, and what's outside of us, and how we can affect it. So in my language and with all my friends, I suggest let's take the power out of the hands of pg and bring it back to the people, and for the time being, they will continue delivering electricity. What do you think of that? Very well. Well said. <laughs> well said. And, uh, of course, they're also an energy company. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. They've taken our energy away. I can think of another reason. <laughs> With the risk of being the resident paranoid, ah. having, <laughs> having, uh, having control locally, uh, gives us uh, more protection. Mm-hmm. I've always thought, especially with these uh, uh, driverless cars, etc., oh, pull the plug and you have control over people's activities mm-hmm. is tremendous threat. Mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if we're talking about moving towards an authoritarian government, which mm-hmm. seems to be uh, the trend, mm-hmm. if this, if it was, uh, if it became more extreme, uh, you could be just threatening, uh, pulling the plug uh, would... It's enormous It's enormous. Power. It's enormous <laughs> right, power. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's true. And uh, especially as we're moving towards, as you said, driverless cars, but the Internet of Things where we're going to be talking to our fridges, and, you know. <laughs> The fridge will tell us that we need more cheese or something, right? Uh, but all those things are going to become dependent. Like we're dependent now on digital switching stations for a landline. If the power goes off, your phone goes off. You're out of communication. And in the 21st century, how does this? So, of course, cell towers, they want more cell towers here. Of well, and this is, this is the thing is humans are obviously highly intelligent and capable of great things. Hmm. And, you know, when we look at the Internet and, and, and cell phones as, as one example, uh, if, if those things can be created, then certainly we can create uh, safer and more sustainable solutions. Hmm. Ho, ho! Yes. <laughs> as long as greed is not the motivating factor. Right, yeah, exactly. Right. And then, you know, besides that, with the very real uh, approach of climate change and climate chaos, the, the, the out-of-controlness of PG&E, as exemplified by the last several fires and then the amazing amount of loss of, mm. of vegetation and safety and the huge amount of anxiety for millions of people and disruption at every level, uh, we're not going to be, this is not business as usual. It's no. over. No. And I think the last, you know, week in, in West Marine certainly showed us that. You know, I have a tiny business. I barely see anybody. There's barely anybody downtown. Things are disrupted to, to, to the core. And it's a good thing, too, right? Because I, I want to be present to the opportunity of not thinking it's business as usual in, in every day of my life. But with climate change, we have to get the electricity out of this huge grids that are very dysfunctional and monolithic and for profit and put it in a safe zone in our communities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Local power. Folks, keep going. Yeah, really power to the people. There you go. <laughs> you know, Bye, so, thank you so much. Thanks for much, calling Eden. in. Eden, you brought up Bye. something interesting, though, and that is the economic, quote-unquote, loss that comes from the uh, electricity 
uh, lack of electricity. Right. So is that good or bad? I mean, here we're talking about uh, consumer society buying less, uh, doing less uh, economically, and uh, and it's it's something that's being uh, uh, thrust upon us through uh, curtailing the electricity. And mm. uh, and. I, it, it's a byproduct, maybe a good byproduct, less consumption for four days. Unless they come and buy Unless what they would have bought. Around. <laughs> right. I don't know. But uh, who's to say that them turning off this part of the world uh, actually did prevent a fire? I mean, who knows? Yeah, apparently there was some guy from Kansas or something driving around in his car, lighting paper on fire and throwing it out the window. Oh, well. Yeah. Specifically trying to catch California on fire. I think he and his girlfriend had a spat but or something. They got caught. but um, You know, down in Southern California, which just had fires every year. Yeah, uh, big one right now. Oof. One of the problems is that they've been building in fire ecologies. Now, mm. there are other aspects. We're building places we shouldn't be building. Yeah. So uh, these, there are areas that depend on fire as a way of... St- Staying ecologically healthy, mm-hmm. and yet we right. put a home there, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Exactly. Well, then it becomes a disaster area instead of just a wildfire, right? Mm. Then it's, uh, and uh, there is a. Uh, it's the end. Uh, New York Times. It's the end of California as we know it. We cannot live sustainably the way we're living. Well, that, we know that to be true, but it's all about how. Cities are spread out, and we're going further and deeper and deeper into forests and wildlands and uh, causing problems. Because if we weren't there, you'd let them, they'd, they'd try, probably try to fight it when it came close to where we actually are in cities uh, instead of uh, living out here in the country. Oh, <laughs> Well, wait a minute. I just we had a fire realized. of our You're own. You're just dissing your own <laughs> lifestyle, there, Paul. How many uh, years ago was our fire? Four one five six six three eight four nine two. But please call four one five six six three nine zero five zero to make a pledge to this wonderful station. That's right, and we just we have. Uh, about 15 minutes to raise $500. Yeah. And, you know, we're part of the way there because uh, George and Sherry Clyde made a challenge grant of $100. Um, so if someone calls in or if several people call in and it adds up to $100, that's $200 towards our goal. That's right. Well, I'm going to throw this in at the last minute. Uh, here, I see here on this form, show specific premiums. So if someone would call in the next... 15 minutes and donate $400, <laughs> I will make a pet portrait for you. Ha-ha! Wow, Shelley that's Rugg. Awesome. That's right. Famous uh, portraitist. But you, you cannot sit and wait. It, it, and it can be a person portrait, either one. Um, but uh, no waiting. You have to act now. Act 415-663-9050. This offer will expire at the end of the show at 1 p.m. It's a very generous <laughs> offer. That really is. From Shelley Rugg, a renowned local painter. So the $400 will help us meet our uh, challenge grant and meet our goal for the um, yes. this a session. Great idea. Call 415-663-9050. Volunteers are standing by. That's right. And, and a $100 donation um, will help us meet the challenge grant, and you can get for that donation a uh, hand turbine emergency mm. radio, and it can charge your cell phone, too. Now, how many people out there? Give us a call if you listened on your Eton radio. We we just used a battery-powered radio. Ah. Um, yeah. I actually I got myself a device from Palace Market. And it is a combination solar-powered lantern that mm. you can blow up so it becomes this cube. I, oh, and it one. also wonderful. can p- charge your cell phone. Well, oh. m- I, did, I haven't found it to be wonderful so far. I, I don't know if I got a bad one, um. maybe, but uh, it did light up for about half an hour, and then oh, it I've, shut off. I've got one solar-powered. It's it, uh, start. It would start to charge my phone, and then if I leave it too long, it starts to suck the power from my phone. <laughs> so, 
Well. So it wasn't really working very well. Hmm. I think it's trying to too, do too much. I've got one one of those blow up lights, and it works very well. well we have but a blow up light doesn't that promise works to, fine. Oh, but this is supposed to also be able to provide power, hmm. and it it's not so. Uh, sounds like a diode is uh, blown. Maybe. Give us a call for uh, to join the conversation about the recent, uh, well, the, let me just say, the ongoing, ongoing <laughs> electricity shutoffs uh, right. in West Marin. And uh, 415-663-8492 for that. But really, the important thing now, and for the, I, how long is this drive? Two, uh, one week? It's or two weeks, I two think. Two weeks. Uh, 415-663-9050. So we need at least $100. Five. We need uh, at least $100 right now. So we can meet our challenge grant. But uh, ultimately, uh, we, we're trying to raise $500 in the next 15 minutes. How much are we trying to raise? 415-663-9050. 60000 60000 Sixty thousand. We've got a little ways to go, but it's day one. It's Happy Halloween! Just started. Uh, it's Halloween. I know you're all out there finding your costumes and putting on. Oh gosh! On face paint. I was uh, before before our show. I was at a meeting at Toby's out in front of Toby's, and all the kids from the preschool came, all dressed up in their costumes. It was so adorable, and I guess they were trick or treating at Toby's coffee bar. Oh. <laughs> It was nice. really cute. Um, here's, an, here's an article called, it was in the Atlantic, The Toxic Bubble of Technical Debt Threatening America. And it's a, it has to do partly with PG&E. Uh, a well-documented history of neglecting the maintenance of its equipment, as with last year's deadly campfire. Uh, early reports suggest that the company's lines could have started the Kincaid fire, too. Even so, uh, hundreds of thousands of residents have had their power shut off, as we know. Um, PG&E makes for an easy villain, as the Wall Street Journal said. Uh, ter- a steaming pile of terrible management and debt. Uh, steaming pile. <laughs> Uh, and the journal's editorial board, however, blamed Sacramento's policies of supporting solar institute installations. Oh, my goodness. What? Which could have pulled the focus away from grid maintenance. Well, oh there's, a, there's something. Uh, yes, we have a caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name? Please. Uh, this is a Luddite Lighthold. <laughs> Luddite Lighthold. <laughs> uh, How are you? I want to say, what is the first step in getting uh, local... Well, I guess, yeah, getting PG&E out Becoming of Becoming local. Energy. Well, we got to have a meeting or something. I mean, it's great. We want local. But then what's concrete uh, what is, yeah. of what we can do? Action. Oh. Next year. You know, next Great week. question. Hey, you know, speaking of this, um, there's an event coming up on November 10th. It's going to be held at the uh, West Marin School um, talking about climate change and and in developing actions that we can all take. And um, so, yeah, you're right. Uh, well, yeah. I'm we need to get organized. Individuals can do a lot, I, you know. Uh, but, you know, to, and we, we all think, oh, it'd be great to have our own power grid out here. Hmm. So I'm just curious for people to start saying, okay, this is the first step. Yeah, good. Right. I think you're right. I think the first step is to have a meeting. Okay. Well, I'll be at the meeting. My okay. suggestion <laughs> would be, uh, part one of my suggestions would be to get in touch with Charles Schultz and Paul yeah. Fenn of Local Power Inc. That's yes, what yes, yes. Oh. they were out here trying to get trying to get San Francisco to do their own grid. And so they're already, uh, they've got some balls rolling already. So we want to get on their Not wagon. Really. They were they were they were presenting years ago. They were presenting to Marin County, and Marin County went with Marin Clean Energy instead, which uh, oh. you know. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. Well, um, I guess yeah. Meetings. Meetings. But somebody, yeah, Charles Schultz and and Paul Finn. Yeah, well, Paul is now, a, uh, he had right? to leave yeah. Marshall. They were evicted, so they went out to uh, Maine or somewhere. Uh, Connecticut. Yeah, they're on a farm in Connecticut. And Charles is still here, though. Right. Okay. Uh, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks you. For calling. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. 
Yeah, we have a couple of minutes, so 415-663-8492 if you want to join the discussion. But please call 415-663-9050 to pledge support for this wonderful radio station and this show. Well, you know, Calendar Club is a great way to go. It's just a little little bit of your your bank account each month. And if it's $15 or more donation each month, you can get entered in this drawing for the $100 value gift basket, which is really great. Uh, For only $50 donation, you get a great tote bag or a headlamp. I've had a headlamp from last time. It's wonderful. (laughs) Jose and I were uh, both wearing our headlamps the other night walking around the house and we realized we couldn't really look at each other directly <laughs> or we'd blind each other. Headlamp protocol. Pretty fun. It's yeah. Yeah. And a hundred dollars. We want a hundred dollars minimum this before this hour is over. We've got ten minutes left. The number to call four one five six six three nine zero five zero. Two donors of fifty dollars each will get us to our match. A hundred dollar donor will get us there quicker. And for five hundred dollar, do- I mean, for a four hundred dollar donation, uh, I will paint a portrait for you. Wow! Either a pet or your or a person. But it has to be during the show. It does within the next ten minutes. Nine and a half. Nine minutes. and a half minutes. You got. Speaking of headlamps, though, I found that during this blackout, uh, I've been reading more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know? Of course. At night, it's what are you going to do? You go to bed and you read. That's it. Or you can play games. Or play games. Or help with crossword puzzles. Make last love. Night. <laughs> <laughs> more time. More time with your loved ones. Right. More yeah. quality time. All the things that are really important. All those morning hours that you find yourself. Hey, another caller. Oh really? Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking. <laughs> Line one. Hi, caller. You are on the air. What's your name, please? My name is Sally. Sally. Hi, Sally. Hello. And I've had a shower. I'm a new person. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, Do you have power? Uh, no. I'm, she, I'm she in friend's to house. Sebastopol. Oh. I've bathed. My hair is no longer a greasy mess. <laughs> Very good. Uh, but that's not why I called. Oh. Um, the issue of energy and power, and I know that um, you had a previous caller who was discussing the the meaning of words like this. Um, It's KWMR also provides energy and power Ah. to the listener and uh, with information and inspiring music programming, and and it's a nice reciprocal process. And so this is the time that even if you're too shy to call in and and have, um, you know, a tangle of words, a sparring of words with Steve, Stevie and Paul Raffel, who's particularly terrifying. Um, <laughs> what? Shelly, you're not scary. Oh, I'm so, good. We're so kindly. <laughs> no, no, I'm being silly. But the thing to do, if you're too shy to call in and, and talk on, on the air, the best thing is to call in and pledge your support right this minute, 415 Three yeah, I and guess if, if if they're afraid to even do that, they could go online and be, you know, really uh, quiet about it true. and donate right. right directly online. I think somebody I just walked in. And pledged online at kwmr.org in the privacy of my friend's backyard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> where I'm almost a home invader here. And it's so nice to infuse KWMR with that kind of energy Hmm. and appreciation, and of course we love the support of listeners and really rely upon it, and also Hmm. our fabulous small businesses that are our underwriters. So that's my pep talk. Thank you very much for that. Well, especially for let's talk. Ah, and uh, how was the uh, power outage for you? The electricity shut down for you. Uh, well, we have a small <laughs> generator, and I have a very handy partner, so things went <laughs> fairly smoothly. And our community all came together. One person had a big generator at his house, and Ooh. he had he allowed everyone to meet every evening 
for dinner and for breakfast as well. Can I have that address? Hey, Sally, we only need fifty more, one more $50 donation to meet our challenge grant in and the next six minutes. We would love to thank Lisa Doran of Inverness. Oh, I, we might have just gotten it. And Sally. Oh, how wonderful. I think we just Sally, got it. Sally, of course, thank you. And Melinda Lighthold, all, all the wonderful women of West Marin who have uh, <coughs> donated. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sally. Thank you. I will hop off so other people can call and discuss their um, issues of, of um, the power outage. Congratulations. And about PG&E and all of that good stuff. PG&E. Oh, yeah. Congratulations on your clean Thank hair. you, Alec. And, okay. uh, yes. Six, five and a half more minutes or, or less. Uh, we need... I think at least $50 to meet the challenge grant. Not we sure. just need lots of money. But, as much um, money as we can get right now. We need 400 more than that. So don't delay. 415-663-9050. KWMR deserves your support. Uh, great presence in the community. So it is. it's a it's a jewel of a station. There are very few little stations like this <laughs> that are run by the people mostly, and uh, mostly volunteers. A a small a handful of dedicated employees, but the rest of the uh, talent and the the running of the place is uh, is volunteer, and it's a real community station. So it's hard to find one that is so. I think we have another caller. As good as this. Hi, caller, you are on the air. Hi, this is Marnie Jackson. I just heard a lot of friends' uh, names with Lisa Doran, Melinda Lighthold, <laughs> and uh, Eden, and I just wanted to chime in and, and uh, give a donation. Oh, oh well. thank you, Marnie. So if you, uh, if you were to call 415-663-9050, you will get right through to Lisa, I believe, is still out there. So it's six six three nine zero five zero. Okay, great. Hey, thank, thank you. you. I don't thank know you so if much. you guys have given away, but I had a premium there. It's a Black Mountain Beauty, all plastic free. Oh, uh, product did that already go? I have no idea. Um, that was another show. We have separate sheets for each show, so that's how. Oh, it okay. Goes. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All there right. So these are friends. These are friends. Let's Let's have some how friends. it all works. Well, it's got about three and a half minutes, people. We got to reach this goal of five hundred dollars. It's a coalition of friends running this place. We and, know uh, you're out there, and very useful. You know, during times when there are uh, emergency situations and uh, shutdowns, this place just keeps on going. We have the generator outside and uh, dedicated, as I said, staff yeah. and volunteers who. Keep it going. We did. I think the generator went off at midnight uh, during this, just to save diesel because uh, uh, because there was no imminent threat. But rest assured that if there were an imminent threat or a warning of that, somebody would have been here at right. night during the in yeah. the depths of the night. I know. I tuned you know. in my my radio, and I knew if I tuned in at fifteen after or at. 30 after or at the mm. top of the hour or so on um, that I would get the latest announcements that uh, you know about what was going on out there hmm. Hmm. and it was comforting that's there's to know really that that one, of there. The, one of the one of the reasons this this uh, station was founded in the first place was after the uh, Inverness fire in so, uh, 94 Five, Pick up your right. phone, 415-663-9050. Make your donation before the clock strikes 1 p.m. <laughs> we want to be able to proudly say we raised $500. And we get the kudos. That's right. Uh, yes. it's uh, So um, we actually have to wind it up. But um, thank you to everyone who pledged. And thank you to all the people listening. And thank you to our callers especially. And Thank you for everyone who, during the next two weeks, is going to give a little bit of money to this station because uh, it relies upon our listeners to uh, help keep it going. Where There's an actual full goal of the drive is $60,000, which uh, is very crucial in keeping this little jewel of a station on the air. So please... 
Be as generous as you can during the next couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you. KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. And we shall return next Thursday. Thank you, everybody, for listening.